you know they've struggled all their lives to you know put their put their money in an fd and you know spend expenses you know i keep telling people you don't have to have that experience you know you can actually you know have a great life you can invest in you know you can obviously make sure that you create wealth over your lifetimes which will be enough for you to you know get your dreams and aspirations Thank you so much for joining me one more time on the Absolutely Right podcast, India's first graphology-based leadership show. My name is Aditi Surana. I'm a behavioral analyst, a high-performance coach, and an anti-anxiety expert. And on this show, especially on our Wednesday episodes, we combine these two very powerful topics. One is graphology-based personality assessment, which means using somebody's handwriting to know the deeper, the real parts of their personality, and leadership, where I interview these phenomenal leaders. entrepreneurs path breakers people who have gone beyond their limitations to create the change that they have every conversation is filled with lots of insights where you can learn a lot about yourself so make sure that you keep your handwriting handy as i analyze our guest today i'll be talking about things that you can learn about your own personality and your own shortcomings just by hearing the conversation so let's get started Our guest on the show today is Pratik Oswal who is the head for passive funds for Motilal Oswal Asset Management Company and interestingly he has started his own venture called Glide Invest. After reading about Glide Invest which is his new tech based financial solution I called Pratik the Robin Hood of financial industry. I say that because only working with high end investors who can invest a large chunk of money and make sure that Pratik and his company earns a lot he is going down the path of democratizing the information giving the access of investing and making the system simpler by using the app by making people more aware and going down the tougher path in a way and i thought that was incredible because so many times people forget that they have to create an impact they only and only focus on their immediate returns so this was an interesting conversation i'm going to make some changes in my portfolio i would like to know what you're going to do if you're looking for getting more disciplined with your investment and changing the approach and figuring out what all is available i think this conversation is for you so without further ado let me invite pratik and let's get started hi pratik welcome to absolutely right how is your experience of writing a handwriting sample have you done that off like after a long time do you write often <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you alati for having me out here looking forward to our conversation today uh, actually you know this this uh, it, it was actually harder than i thought because uh, Uh, I don't remember the last time actually me writing something with a with pen and paper. In fact, even I have that uh, iPad with the iPad pencil, so yeah. I, I normally use that to take notes, uh, which is very spoiled. But yeah, I think uh, uh, it's great because I I sort of felt that I was activating a different side of my brain today, okay. um, which which was a pleasant feeling. So um, I I definitely think that uh, you know after today's experience, I'll be writing more. So I always end every show saying happy writing. The reason is I want more and more people to get to physical writing. So if it gets you initiated, I would be very very happy. So we want to know more about your current project that is completely driven and focused on young investors. Why do you think that is important and why did you choose to be the Robin Hood here? I am I I actually enjoy what I realized uh, over the last 2 years. is that uh, i enjoy talking to people you know i i enjoy educating people i i i love you know taking questions i i love answering the same thing over and over again for some reason <laughs> you know i think um, um so 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 i and and i believe that uh, you know if i had to make one difference in maybe lives of many people or even the universe or whatever it is i think it's uh, at least uh, and 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 something i enjoy is is finance you know and investing you know something that uh, you know i picked up books when i was 11 hundreds of books and all of that so i think um, you know that's why uh, i i want to spend my time in my life doing i think uh, you know i think finance is important and you know i think uh, it's i think uh, i i it's it's very important that people know that you know um that that uh, making uh, that creating wealth is actually as important as you know making money on your job you know i think uh, very few people end up uh you know becoming wealthy on their job it's it's almost impossible if you look at every wealthy person on the planet mm. every wealthy person then it's not like they on they become wealthy because they get a good salary 
mm-hmm. they get they get wealthy because they own something when they own their own business they own their own brand they own uh, companies you know private public whatever it is so i think ownership is extremely important and you know unlike uh, a lot of my friends in their parents generation where you know they've struggled all their lives to you know put their put a money in an fd and you know spend expenses you know i keep telling people you don't have to have that experience you know you can actually you know have a great life you can invest in you know you can obviously make sure that you create wealth over your lifetimes which would be enough for you to you know get your dreams and aspirations so i think that's pretty much what the what what my I, and 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 i have seen that you know i've lived in the us you know i have i i have i have seen you know plumbers and electricians who created crazy amount of wealth because they were right. disciplined they've been invested and they understand the importance of you know i think building wealth Mm-hmm. um you know there's a very um, important metric that you know at around 50 your the money you make from investment should be higher than the money you make no job that's when you know that you made it so i think that's uh, pretty much the goal that i want to see from people and um, that's why i'm sort of you know focused in the investing space with with glide invest um, to put an analogy uh, you know glide invest you know helps investors you know i think uh, automate your savings so you know a, a person who wants to build wealth uh it does not have to have the knowledge required to build wealth you know you can do it in a very simple way in which you know you can interact with the application or you know um, the interface and it will basically ask you ask you a few questions and based on that it will you know allocate or tell you what to do in terms of how to invest your money and in so fact what do you mean what do you mean by automation because it is kind of difficult <clears throat> to think about all these financial yeah, yeah 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 most people yeah. keep themselves away from all the jargons and the difficulties yeah. and obviously the investors uh, so the investment experts also make sure that you feel threatened enough when it comes to your investment decision so how are you trying to break this yeah so um, the biggest fear in india is 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 choice you know what should i do what how should i do it you know how much should i put in right and um, i think um, that is that is the biggest entry barrier for investors um for long term investors you know for someone who wants to make a quick buck uh, mm-hmm. there is obviously a, a huge market where you can invest in stocks and you know all these instruments but if you want to really create wealth i think uh, fear of you know too many choices and how do i start and all of that is a big deal you know we obviously want to solve that problem by saying that you know all we have to say is how much you want to invest on a monthly basis or you know you can tell us about your goals what is your goal in 10 or years or 15 years and we will get you there you know um, um without you having to make any decision uh, when it comes to what to buy how much to buy when to buy all of that i think those are the problem states with that we're trying to you know solve you know using this uh, using client invest Okay, and, so and, and 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 as an analogy just to you know i think make a study it's like you know you can um, what is a lot more saleable is um, uh, a drug or a painkiller you know whereas uh, what is difficult to sell is a multivitamin oh, you know? so i think the market for multivitamins is a lot lower but there is a market for multivitamins and i'm i'm sort of going for that market where you, know, you want to do things that are generally good for you and which will not give you a, a initial payoff but will pay off in a extremely big way in say 5 10 15 20 years you know so i think that's where you know glide invest comes in uh, you have a lot of finance industry 95% is in the process of selling you painkillers yeah. you know, obviously we want to be the ones that are in this um, sort of domain so on multivitamins is it like actually multiple options that you invest in or is it one instrument that you pick up Yeah so we we would diversify your portfolio across different asset classes so you don't have to do so you just have to click a button and we would uh, basically invest your money in indian equity in 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 foreign equity uh, so you can buy apple google microsoft all those big companies you can buy gold and you can also buy debt which is extremely sort of stable which will stabilize your portfolio over time so when you combine all four in one portfolio it's actually a pretty good mix um, and also hedges you during bad times uh, especially you know because equity tends to be the most volatile right uh, and 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 super and, and people tend to have the highest fear but by combining all these four asset classes you know you're actually getting something an output which mm-hmm. is actually uh, a lot stable which which sort of keeps you invested um, and keeps you putting that monthly check or that the monthly investment year over year month over month for for a very long time so that's uh pretty much what they what what we are trying to do and we also simplify it in such a way that we customize it for the user so mm-hmm. if a user is not very risk taking we would give them a very low risk portfolio and if user is okay to you know i think take more risk we would obviously give them a higher risk portfolio and that's how and, that's how we would sort of uh, structure things and uh, i was doing some research about it and you are very particular about getting young investors to invest here so what is the minimum amount people can begin with 
Yeah, so uh, so broadly, you know, a young investor can invest in any mutual fund, you know, but most mutual funds for five hundred. But at Glide, I think you can start off with you know as low as maybe three to four thousand rupees a month. You can also do thousand, but you know it's not a very diversified approach. So we would recommend at least uh, five ten thousand bucks a month, which should not be a problem for most people, you know, who are. You know, trying to you know build their wealth over the long term. Sure. Uh, so that's that's what uh, we're trying to do. And the reason why you know I think young investors are important is because you know you have to um, you know and, and and this is where the power of compounding comes in. Uh, yeah. and, and this is what and is a concept that you know not many people, including me, not understand fully. It's a it's an extremely powerful concept, and um, you know it talks about how you know um, a small decision today. Can make a huge difference, compounding impact in say 20, 20 25, 30 years from now. So I, I, I give a very simple example. You know, Warren Buffett is one of the wealthiest person, people in the world. He started investing it around 11, 11 years or 12 years, and it took him 50 years to get to $1 billion in net worth, which is huge. And another 20 years from, from $1 billion to go to $100 billion. Mm. You know, so that's the power of compounding, you know, so, uh, which is, so the secret source of investing is not what do I invest? How much do I invest? You know, it's about giving it time, you know, which, which is where, you know, I think young people have a incredible advantage of time, extra five or 10 or 15 years, you know, for their money to compound, uh, which, which makes a huge difference, uh, you know, over the long run. So we have asked you to write a paragraph on a blank unruled sheet of paper. You wrote like a nice paragraph for me to look at multiple strokes of your writing. And I'm going to analyze your personality with the help of that writing. It's called graphology. The subject is called handwriting analysis. And as I do that, as I walk into it, we will also discover who you are, how you make your life decisions, what exactly goes wrong, what your fears are, what your challenges are. So we're going to, in a way, walk into a coaching session where we will absolutely discover the person that you are and what makes you a successful entrepreneur and a business owner are you ready yeah yeah thank you uh, i'd i'd love to know uh, about that as well <laughs> sure <laughs> so first thing that comes to my mind when i look at your writing is the division between what we call graphologically the upper zone the middle zone and the lower zone so if you look at your own handwriting it is divided into the tall letters like l d t and then there are middle zone letters like M, A, N, you know, everything that happens in the middle. And then you have the bottom letters like Y, G, J. So the way the writing is divided into these three zones, it talks about, are you driven by intellectual activities? Are you motivated by doing everyday roti, kapda, makan kind of activities? Or are you an executor who is completely driven by your materialistic goals and, you know, achieving the targets that you have in mind? My first instinctive way of looking at your writing is you're highly driven by ideas, concepts, intellectual challenges. So no matter what you do, if you're not stimulated enough, you won't continue doing that activity. I think uh, that's probably an understatement. I'm extremely stimulated. You know, I think uh, I'm always looking for challenges, looking for ways to learn. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I want to be on this hyper learning curve where, you know, um, I have this like, uh, crazy thirst for curiosity and knowing everything and anything about, um, you know, the world, you know, I've obviously chosen finance, which is great. Uh, you know, it, it sort of helps me understand the world better, right, but, right. uh, yeah, I, I completely agree. I think I, I gain a lot of happiness from, from this. In fact, uh, you know, weekends are not as much fun as, you know, coming to office on a Monday. So, you know, really? I can, how lucky can happily, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can happily say that I can, I sort of tiptoe to work and I really look forward to it because, you know, I, I get to learn something from so many people, interesting people uh, at my workplace who, you know, I've, who's obviously a lot better, a lot more, um, you know, focused in, in what they do. So I kept getting, uh, so I keep getting insights from all of them. Yeah. And, and if there are insights and, you know, if things get simpler, like the generic idea of happy life is when life is comfortable and you don't have much to do contrary to your life, where if life gets comfortable and if you don't think that you are doing enough, you start getting restless and you start adding more and more projects to your whatever repertoire or whatever is happening. You just want to add so that you are not, you don't have a single dull moment in a way. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I, I agree. Um, it's very interesting that you said happiness uh, because uh, I, I, I mean, obviously I get a lot of happiness from work and all of that. It's, it's, it's really a lot of fun. But for me, I think it's more of enjoyment, you know, more than happiness. I, I, I enjoy it's a lot of fun. It's like playing sport, okay. you know, uh, playing football. You know, I keep telling people that, you know, I think success is about, you know, getting what you want, but 
you know happiness tends to be wanting what you get so you know i think uh, <laughs> it's, it's more from you know being grateful about you know having the right people or you know i mean just just being happy with whatever that is happening and i think um, and, and and the good thing about that is that you know work is always good but a lot of times work is bad it's tough obviously yeah you have so many you know like things that you have to deal with on a daily basis whereas you know what you have is like relatively stable at least at this point of time so i think uh, that's how i would sort of you know compare uh, you know at least happiness versus you know enjoyment and thrill and you know um, i would say that thirst for learning so uh, you mentioned that uh, you go through like five six things at a time what what is that about like it is isn't it a rare thing like i know i read three books at a time and people find that weird and they're like but why can't you finish one but i know i'm a dyslexic so that allows me to really jump into multiple things and read between the lines what is your secret yeah um you know again it's it's to do with you know i think just uh, you know um intellectual stimulation that's number one you know i want to be able to learn from different disciplines you know there's this concept called mental models where you know you want to be able to learn from you know different sort of perspectives and facets of life so you don't want to so i think super super specialization especially in the world of business is not something which is useful you want to have mm-hmm. you know a range of sort of skill sets um, which is why it's good to that you know you learn from different books and all that you know i think um, you know um, i think it's important to have that multifaceted work and also helps you uh, in solving problems as well you know because you know if you have just if you're reading just one book on business or if you if you're not reading about psychology or philosophy then you know you only solve problems from a business way which may not be the right way so i think uh, it's good that you know you have that multifaceted arsenal of uh, you know of knowledge which really helps you think differently and also you know i think tackles problems in a very different way uh, so that's that's basically why you know i think uh, uh, you know it's impo- i mean why i sort of spend so much of my time on you know doing different things so pratik what is your vision like you come from a family where investment uh, wasn't a habit back in the day but i think your family worked very hard especially your father to create that space for indian investors and now you are taking it to the next level so what is what is the the vision that you have uh yeah so uh so <laughs> so i actually don't have a vision that's uh yeah so i i the way i i and and i can make something up but it won't be genuine mm-hmm. um i see myself as someone who just wants to be useful uh you know i think uh, that's pretty much what my motivation is and i and and, and i want to enjoy stuff you know i think uh, so i want to do difficult stuff so it's not like i want to uh, but it's it's important that uh, you know i build something where you know i can say that you know okay fine i've actually solved the problem or you know i've actually been extremely useful at this point uh, but yes you know as you said uh, you know yes my my uh, i'm i'm extremely proud about my family and you know i think uh, um it's um, i'm extremely privileged also because you know i keep telling people that 99% of whatever is whatever you see you know in 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 form and brain is probably you know i think because of you know my mom and dad and my sister and my wife and all of that they've had an incredible amount of influence on me of of what you see of me so i think uh uh it's just incredibly grateful and lucky and hopefully i can make the most of it it's important to like leave your ecosystem or a bubble because i mean it's very hard to think different uh if you're stuck in this bubble um wherever you are in the world so i think you have to go out there and wander and find it before you come back and you know i think and it also helps you get more perspective let's let's talk about you know this this very moment you know i think uh, you know i'm i'm obviously talking to you and i'm having a great time uh, talking to you but this very moment is a confluence of you know last 10 years of decision making you know and uh, you know i have to ask myself you know, am i happy at this point i'm like yes i'm happy so great uh, i i i am happy that i made the right decisions over the last say 5 10 15 years to be able to get here so i think as you said uh, it's a combination of so many things going wrong as well as right you know uh, for, for me to you know get where i am right now so i like the fact that uh, you said that uh, you know i am uh, extremely sort of uh, i'm i'm looking for stimulation you know i'm looking for uh, you know somewhere where i can learn a lot know a lot uh, do a lot uh, but uh, you know sometimes um, uh, you know uh, when when people ask me uh, what is what really motivates you you know and 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 you say so is it okay for me to say that you know i'm more motivated by stimulation than by success you know is that will that be a problem you know in the future or something oh so more high performers are study i have come to realize and you know on the show and otherwise professionally i've come to realize that people who are driven by a process or honing their skill 
or going deeper into the pursuit of any skill or any art that they pick up only because that is their pursuit hmm. then they are not necessarily dependent on external validation the actual result of success or failure but they commit to their their journey no matter what like i was re- reading kobe bryant's book and he speaks a lot about how showing up and doing his practice we had aparna popat as a guest a few weeks ago and she spoke about uh, 17 years of being in the practice every single day without a break so she said if you if you are committed to your process and what you're talking about stimulation as, as your guiding force instead of the result now as i understand uh, some people only go for stimulation and they get distracted and they keep doing things which are shiny bright you know instant gratification and then they forget about the larger idea but that won't be applicable to you and i'm saying that looking at your handwriting because when you place uh, in your letter t there's a horizontal line we call it t bar when you place that t bar it talks about how long term do you think in the future your long term thinking is around 5 to 7 years and in that case if you don't have any plan which is that long term you won't quickly jump and change and alter you may think that i'm going horizontal in my learning and i'm picking up multiple things and i'm curious about stuff but you do not miss on the the path or the trajectory that you choose i'm also saying that because there is something called baseline in the writing the imaginary line on which you write now in your case those lines are quite straight which shows uh, that the focus about the activity and the way you want to go about it is quite high so in your case the stimulation is a style it is not only the the outcome it may mm. look like that and people may you know conclude it like that because you're driven by so many activities at a time and most people are not used to people like that you know the ideal successful person's idea in our minds is the one who has one thing and he's following it and he kind of achieves it against all odds that's not your idea your mm. idea is to find uh, follow the curiosity find the next thing that you truly believe in give your 100% to it and see what happens now that idea by itself is a new age idea i think our generation resonates with it a lot more but if you are working with many experts who are many senior professionals already for them it is it is an anomaly and for them it they won't be able to relate to it so it may look like an odd thing but i would say that uh, more uh, high performers i study i think this is the the way to go about it is you explore things to the t you give yourself some time to experiment with it and and really really find what you want to do or what is your opinion around it wow okay okay yeah that's that's uh yeah that's uh, super helpful <laughs> so on yeah. our show if you like something you say absolutely right because that's the name of the show absolutely right <laughs> absolutely right um absolutely right wow mm-hmm. but but uh, what if my handwriting changes so it hasn't changed in since i was a kid since mm-hmm. i was maybe 8 or 10 whenever i started learning uh, cursive writing was when you yeah. joined stuff yeah, yeah, yeah so it, it hasn't changed so um, so i'm guessing it's going to stay the same for the rest of my life but if it it keeps changing so uh, if i'm coaching somebody i meet them every two weeks and handwriting keeps changing and i can really tell the person what happened in the last two weeks so there okay. are minute changes about the writing which keep happening and i think that is the most fascinating part is like a mirror right if you're changing within the mirror should capture it like for example if your expressions are changing your mirror should be able to tell you that yeah. if it doesn't yeah. then you would probably change the mirror because it is not giving you the feedback you require but uh, handwriting is divided into three parts one part never ever ever would change it would remain the way it was because it's part of your core personality it doesn't change at all then there are parts which change every 5 to 6 years mm. you might not notice them because appearance wise it looks the same but when we go more uh, medical or graphological about it we will find those changes over a period of time and yeah. obviously you have temporary things that change like your mood swings and in your your current excitement or stimulation and all of them will be captured in the right okay wow okay absolutely right <laughs> Okay. Um not okay. every time Pratik. Whenever. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I'm a, yeah. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. but it, it is I mean it, it is actually um I mean very very sort of rightly said so mm-hmm. yeah. And also it is it is very mathematical. So it's it, it may look like I'm I'm coming up with you know all these interpretations 
but the study of writing is absolutely mathematical like any like like for the way you you study trends for any stock or for any investment i would look at the patterns and i would look at the data points and i would look at what has changed and why the writing has molded in a particular way and all of that is actually interpreted to talk about the personality because people are complex and they are constantly changing it becomes like a you know a, a moving goal in that sense but if you look at it calmly and if i look at your trajectory over a period of time it is a very consistent way of understanding the person okay 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 Next so question. um i had some more questions please go so, ahead you know i think um, any any so um i tend to learn a lot from failure so mm -hmm. um i am i don't think i'm a very fear driven person i i don't really fear um you know, and 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 i'm i'm and i'm okay failing and all that uh, small failures obviously and um, you know because of that i tend to be a little bit more risk taking uh, you know tend to be uh, take take uh, use my gut a lot more as opposed to using data and all of that hmm. but is that the right approach uh, that you think that i'm 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 taking in terms of because you know the um um uh, the uh, the learning curve tends to be a lot higher you sure. know i think uh, when you when you're feeling and uh, you know when you're doing multiple things at one time you know, you're doing more things you're doing more decisions you know some are going right some are going wrong but the wrong ones are actually teaching you a lot more than the, the things that are going right so any views on you know how this approach can um, uh, could could or could could be or could not be good so, so before i get there i want to uh, ask you which is your favorite failure story Oh, favorite failure story. So many. Oh my God. Um, I would say um, uh, I wouldn't say failure, but um, I think a story that has um, led me to this uh, approach of uh, not being scared to fail is uh, something that happened in my childhood. Mm -hmm. You know, so I used to um, have this really bad uh, uh, stammering problem or stuttering problem. Okay. You know, which was uh, which was really bad. You know, I think uh, till my my maybe uh, late teens or early twenties, it was there, okay. and um, I wasn't able to you know develop friendships and you know like be able to do any public uh, speaking and you know talk like this on a podcast, <laughs> which would be like a dream in my seventh oh. uh, sort of life or whatever it is. So I think um, uh, uh, so, so so that was emotionally obviously uh, not easy, and also I think you know I couldn't. and my stuttering was such that i could not pronounce certain uh, certain vowels okay. so so i had to basically rehearse every single sentence i said and then switch uh, and then swap the words and then say it and this is what i did for for a huge part of my life but i think what i learned is um, that you know these are all psychological problems and uh, i did speech therapy for a number of years and i eventually got over it it was great but i think what really helps is you know as, as a kid you know you don't really take things seriously you know i mean whatever <laughs> you want to play football and come back and you don't really take your problems very seriously it's like yeah whatever whatever it is it will happen it will get better over time and all of that in fact i had a, a, also a physical problem Uh, I had a really acute migraine uh, when I was a kid. So, oh. in fact, I wasn't allowed to play in the sun till I was fourteen. Uh, I wasn't allowed to skip meals. I had a lot of restrictions, and uh, I, I, and that was, and I went on this crazy, uh, you know. Um, uh, to be honest, I feel bad for my parents more than anything else. <laughs> you know, I, I wish they hadn't yeah. taken so much stress. But okay. uh, you know, as a parent, you just you know. So we went to like some hundred doctors and all of that, and I ultimately did this uh, really. Difficult diet where I lived on cotton cotton rice for like eight months. It was some Ayurvedic diet, and I was and it was the best time of my life. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, if, if I had to have that today, it would be extremely difficult. Yeah. But I hadn't had a headache for eight months. True. You know, so I think uh, what I realized is that you know, uh, you know, it's it's uh, you know, failure is not failure, but you know, going through struggling times, you know, just don't take it seriously. You know, I think uh, you know, um, and 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 think about how you can solve that problem as opposed to you know feeling bad about it. You know, it's like playing football. You know, so I, I used to be a also a big sports person. So I couldn't. Uh, so the good thing is that you know I I couldn't. Um, I wasn't good at communication, but I was excellent in sports. Oh, so nice. That's why my personality really. Uh, but which spoke. is interesting, Pratik. So till uh, your age of fourteen, you could not play in the sun, and still yes. you managed to. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Sports. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, you know, that's I interesting. Uh, yeah. Some yeah, very sort of commitment for you to like still show up and do your practices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and exactly. multiple sports. You know, I used to play like you know national table tennis and like you know I had some Langer record for cricket and all that. So wow. I had a natural. You're just saying everything in past. Which I, like, which you know, it's just an ability. <laughs> I I didn't know about it, and you no, know, I sort of thank my stars to you know be able to play sport and all of that. 
Um, you know, so you know, as actually a saying, you know, um, like a healthy person has a hundred problems, a sick person just has one. You know? <laughs> so, True, so I yeah. think, um, yeah. So uh, I think what I realized is that you know, um, you know, it's good. Uh, it's a good learning opportunity. You know, failure and uh, you know, success is there. But it's uh, to me, in fact, I feel it's a lousy teacher. I don't learn much. But uh, failure has been great because you know, it's a, it's the it's the best uh, instant feedback loop. You know, I've had uh, people in my team leaving. I've had, you know, in my in my startup, I was working in uh, in, in Silicon Valley. We've had like ten problems every day. We right. almost ran out of money. Uh, we hadn't paid people for six months. You know, we we yeah, it was a lot of issues. But uh, you know, I think you just have to persevere and, and be at it, and just make sure you are you know there and just doing it, and make sure you're surviving and you know moving ahead. Uh, to answer your question, if I look at your writing, there are two things I would say that um, do you fear failure do you thrive on the failure if i have to talk define it i would say you're very comfortable with it for sure we have a trait in the writing called fear of failure uh, where the letter m uh, the second part of the letter m is taller than the first one you don't have that fear of failure but there is an interesting other trait which i would like you to ponder about a bit which is not understood easily and i generally don't talk about it it's called fear of success mm. So sometimes for people who are driven by journeys, they feel once the, the success is achieved, probably I would miss the journey or I would, I don't even know what that looks like. And they kind of keep themselves protected from the idea or defined idea of success because they do not want to fall into the trap that I have to overachieve after that and then I have to keep up with my own track record or the, whatever other reasons are. So I would definitely request you to explore this topic. It is yeah. seen when the letter Y has a loop that is completed, but it goes downwards. So it's almost like the Y loop starts. It goes all the way to the neck of the Y. But before it reaches there, it turns around and it goes downwards. So mm. that is a specific trait. And I do see that. So I would say definitely pay attention to this concept of fear of success and explore it. Because it might yeah. be a little psychological uh, you know, idea. Sometimes when I've spoken to CXOs, so somebody who was heading finance for an organization for a corporate, and he was due for a promotion and he could have become the CEO and he just avoided it. And the whole organization is like, but you are, a, you are the candidate. Why are you not going with it? And he said, because I don't want to be a CEO. And it took many sessions for him to admit that but he had a similar st stroke in the writing. So I kept asking these questions. I'm like, what's up? Like, why would you not move forward? And he said, I want to move forward. I want to learn more. I want to make more money, but I don't want to be a CEO. So that trajectory is not for me because that means I have to socialize a lot more. That also means I have to be responsible for functions like operations and marketings, which in a way I, I don't understand fully. So yeah. in order to avoid those unnecessary burdens, he was happy being where he was instead of just being successful in the eyes of other people. Yeah. Right. So I think yeah. that may give you a different context. here. Yeah. I mean, it, it actually comes down to my next question. Okay. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I've had some crazy. So in one of the things I'm doing, um, you know, so I've had some crazy traction in the last two years, you know, something outside my wildest of imaginations. So I had the index funds and ETFs, uh, passive funds business at uh, Mutilal as well. And we've had some insane traction over the last two years, like mind blowing traction. Um, I hope my competitors are not listening to me, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, but basically, you know, it's given me a false sense of self-confidence I feel. And um, um, I, I keep attributing a lot of love to whatever has happened. Um, um, at the same time, you know, I obviously, you know, don't mind, you know, being, CEO. in fact, I, I mean, I think being CEO is awesome because you get to, you know, I think, uh, make learn more, more. yeah, learn more. Also, uh, you tend to make more decision making and you get to, you know, talk to smarter people, you know, so I think that that's fine, but it's just that, um, you know, some, when something happens very quickly, you know, you tend to attribute a lot of, uh, um, you know, I think there's this fair false sense of self-confidence, which I'm wary about, which is good in one way, because I'm careful. Mm -hmm. And and I don't want to you know be ahead of you know what will happen, uh, but at the same time you know it's um, uh, it's not a problem. It's just uh, you know something which, as you said, I have to keep in mind. You know, um, 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 I think going forward. So when I look at your signature specifically, you write your name and then you have a stroke that comes back and almost scratches the signature. Yeah. Okay. Now that is an ideal stroke of self-criticism. 
Okay, so I'm very happy with the way you want to stay grounded and do not let the whole success get into your head. I, I, I understand where you're coming from. But if you can spend some time, you know, in next 48 hours to see how exactly do you become self-critical? Do you actively dismiss your own achievements? Do you put yourself down and, and say that probably it's not a big deal, it just happened? And that is a mechanism probably you have developed to keep yourself grounded or for whatever reason in the past. But there is this trope. And I cannot deny the fact that if somebody is self-critical, they will think they are imposters. They will probably do not yeah. have in them to be here. And those thoughts are not true. But this is how the self-doubt or self-criticism creeps in with or without our knowledge. And then it starts playing on our mind, especially when we are evaluating and doing introspection and self-evaluation more than anything else. And that is something I would definitely want you to pay attention to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll, I'll definitely, obviously, I think pay attention to it. And um, I, I don't see any negatives of it, to be honest. Uh, um, at least at this point of time, I don't see any negatives of it. I think it could be a positive thing, uh, you know, so going forward. It might not be negative at large if you look at it in, in a way of being humble, but it is a stroke that talks about you take a step ahead and you take two steps back. And that could be a way a cautious investor thinks, right? You know, you want to make sure that you evaluate all the risk before you jump in. Yeah. Logical. But if you are getting self-critical, that one dialogue, that one conversation is the most crucial one for us. What you talk to yourself when you're talking in the mirror, what you talk to yourself when you're evaluating your own performance. So you do not require external critiques because you can be critical enough for yourself and you can say things in a very harsh manner. And I think that is that I think is not necessarily healthy. So I agree okay. that, you know, staying grounded is healthy as an approach, but that's the outcome we are looking at. This method of achieving that outcome, I would definitely question. Got it. Got it. Got it. So if we have to uh, you know, keep a few things in mind for investors to look at that discipline or be more serious about investing itself, what would you tell these people? What, what, where should they begin or how they should look at it? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when it comes to investing, uh, you know, make it, uh, you know, keep it super simple, um, I would say. So, you know, I think um, the biggest enemy of the investor is, uh, you know, I think um, you know, there's a saying, you know, um, in, in, in investing, the more you do, the less returns you get. So I think it's important to, uh, is, is, is to do a few things, but, you know, make sure you do it consistently over a long time. Um, I think it's also important uh, that, you know, investors don't get swayed away by what's happening in the market, which is extremely difficult, you know, so I was talking to you earlier, earlier on and, you know, uh, the problem is, you know, today's market, especially if you, you know, read the news or you know, what CNBC and all this, you'll see that, you know, there's a lot of fear of missing out and people are putting in lots of money into the markets and, you know, they want to make, uh, you know, uh, riches overnight and all of that right. uh, that's very rare you know you i mean very rarely do you meet someone who's who's created wealth in a very short amount of time it normally takes 10 15 20 25 30 years so i think um, you know taking a long term approach is extremely important you know number two it's important that uh, you know you um, you know uh, ha you you are uh, disciplined to ride the the wave you know mm -hmm. there will be times when you would have lost, you know, 20, 30, 40% of your money in the short term, mm. but it's important to keep on investing because you know, investing in down markets is, if not more important and as important, you know, than investing in, you know, markets that are growing. So I think um, it's important to get that discipline going because, you know, if you don't have a discipline, then you won't really make a lot of money. Um, and third is, you know, don't be swayed by speculation. You know, I think uh, there are two, two sorts of investors. One is, an investor who wants to buy businesses, you know, mm -hmm. buy businesses and, and, and hope that they'll do well. And India has done phenomenally well and will do well. Mm -hmm. The other uh, type of investor is the one who wants to buy at 25 and sell at 35. Mm -hmm. now, don't be that person. Don't be that person. You will, you will, there's a pretty high likelihood that you won't make money. I would look at it from more of anxiety perspective because we do a lot of work around anxiety and I've seen people who only become price sensitive when it comes to their investment are constantly pegged their happiness and their stress everything is pegged to the movement of the market and they they get very miserable on offline when the market is not active because their emotions are fluctuating as much as the price. So I would also say that there are other risks of health and emotional imbalance which happens for people 
Like they're only thinking about the price sensitive investment instead of long-term yeah. investment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think, uh, you know, the number one rule is that you have to, you know, I mean, I think, um, uh, be, uh, I think self, uh, you know, so, so, so in investing, you know, um, uh, psychology is a lot more important than actually finance. Okay. You know, a good investor is someone who understands psychology, who understands his or her biases. And one, one, and one who understands the biases can actually not avoid them, but actually be aware of them. So mm-hmm. I think, uh, uh, as you said, you know, I think uh, you have to be, um, you have to understand that there will be times when you lose a lot of your money. Mm-hmm. But if you are in for the long game, and then then it doesn't really matter in a big way. You know, I was talking about, you know, uh, kids, kids, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't take my problems seriously. Mm-hmm. And um, I think even even now, I think um, a failure is just a setback. You know, the idea is that it should not really impact your well-being. Uh, the, in, investing is exactly the same thing. You know, investing, I would say failure would be the market going down. And it's extremely important that investors don't get swayed or don't get, don't take it seriously, you know, because uh, if you look at the long-term sort of 10, 15, 20 years, if you have a clean mind and if you want to invest for a long time, then it doesn't really matter, you know, what happens to the markets. You just have to stay invested and uh, make sure that, you know, you don't react and do something dumb uh, based on where the markets are. So Pratik, when is it a good time to remove your investment in that sense, especially if somebody is considering it, you know, as a long-term plan, when do you know when to exit? Yeah, so there's two easy ways. Um, and, and I don't see any third way of why you should sell your okay. investments. You know, um, I'd say one is if you achieve your goals. So if you're say, saying for a goal, like a house or a car or something like that, then and if you achieved it, you should sell and you should buy that goal, you know, enjoy yourself. Uh, the second one um, is, uh, I think what I would also add in the first one is emergencies. So if mm. you have some personal emergency, then um, then it makes sense for you to you know sell some of your investments. But the second reason is if you wanted to rebalance your portfolio. So this is a slightly more complicated concept, but I'll make it super simple. You know, um, I talked about you know in, in investing, it's important to uh, you know have a sort of um, uh, um, have a portfolio. You know, have a portfolio where you, know, you have say you know equity, debt, you know gold, all of that in your portfolio. But what will happen over a period of time, say over five years, is that your equity will grow the fastest. You know, so and and what happens is as you age, you know, your portfolio will keep on getting more and more risky, more and more risky, and it should be the opposite, right? So you should, mm-hmm. or you should stay in the same risk level. So I think you should sell your investments which are doing well or which have done really well to get back to what your allocation, what what your original allocation was. And this is actually a very prudent way of, you know, I think investing. Uh, you know, I recommend people do it one, once a year, not more than that, okay. uh, to make sure that you are back to your original allocation and stay there for the rest of your life. So I think these are the two reasons uh, what I would say where people should sell the investments. So like people do a uh, physical checkup on a, on a yearly basis. So you recommend that people should invest for long term and they should check their portfolios health every every year pretty much. Is that No, 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 no. Please, please don't check your health. No, that's, <laughs> if, you, if you've invested in the right, uh, in, 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 in someone you trust or right fund or if you invested in, say, an index fund, ETF, then it doesn't really matter. You don't need a health checkup. Um, I think uh, you could do it. If you're investing in stocks, which are extremely mm. volatile, it makes sense to do a um, maybe check a up. yearly checkup. Yeah. But if you're investing in something diversified, then to be honest, um, I, I mean, I, I, I probably do it once every three, four years. So I don't know the last time I saw my portfolio. <laughs> So okay. it's an, it's an autopilot. Um, so, so, uh, so I think, yes, uh, it's prudent to do it, but to be honest, not needed. Um, I'll, I'll give an example of a lot of my clients. So I have a lot of clients who are doctors and lawyers mm. and they tend to be the best investors. Why? Because they don't know a lot about investing. They just have a savings mindset where they're putting in money every month right. and they in fact perform the best. Uh, in fact, the highest category returns and we've, uh, it's an important lesson that, you know, you should not really do, it's fine to do a checkup, but don't make a lot of changes in your portfolio. You know, just let it be if you're happy with it there will be periods when it's performing badly it's fine just stay for the long game and and you, you'll obviously be a, a top quarter investor the person who stays put mm-hmm. will be the top 10 percent of the investors in, in india who doesn't mm-hmm. do anything so, oh, wow. so so my job is basically to tell people not to do anything so literally you're very... saying is less is more here and if you don't uh if you so it, it no, also nothing be... nothing not even less nothing you should <laughs> not be doing anything you yeah, just... but Pratik, that is dependent on making a right decision of of finding a person who you trust or yeah. finding a system who you trust so again you know to pick your brains on this one for our listeners to who are probably are investing but to make it better or get initiated into it in the manner that you're speaking about. Uh, what, what should one keep in mind to decide 
with whom they should invest. I would not even say where, but with whom they should invest. What are the criteria for that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, I would say, you know, um, there are a lot of options out there. So keeping it super simple, you know, I think buying a simple index fund is the easiest way to, you know, have a portfolio where which is completely, you know, you don't have to worry about risk. You don't have to worry about someone performing badly. So just to, for the audience, you know, I think um, many of you would have known what a Sensex is or a Nifty is. They are basically broad indicators of the market. Right. So the Sensex is up, the broader markets are up and it's down, broader markets are down and the whole, and, and what happens when you buy an index fund or an index mutual fund, it's diversified. So you don't have to worry about stock risk, uh, one stock going badly or one stock being good. It's diversified. And also you have, you don't have to worry about poor performance because you're just following the index, which has done super well in the last 15, 20 years. So I think that's um, one way of keeping it super simple is mm-hmm. to make that decision. You can buy any index fund and you just stick to it for, for a very, very long time. The most difficult decision is actually an equity fund. So that's where the, it's the most volatile. It's the most, uh, I would say, uh, the most complicated in terms of making a decision. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, apart from that, I would also recommend investors to, you know, buy a small proportion of investments in gold. It's done well during bad times. Uh, then buying a, I would say, a decent debt fund. You know, mm-hmm. so uh, debt is great because, uh, you know, unlike an FD, where the tax is very high and debt fund tax is a lot lower. So it's a very tax efficient sort of structure. Mm. So maybe according to a risk profile, if you're very high risk, then put say 20, 30% of your money in debt and the rest can be in equity. And the fourth is, you know, international allocation. So, you know, these four things, uh, but, I mean, it's good to have a, a fund that's tracking say the U S stocks, because, you know, they do really well. And again, they give you a lot of diversification benefits. So I think these four are categories if you could have one fund in each category, well, that's more than enough for okay. the long-term needs. So as Google and Facebook is making money off us, we also start you making can also some make money, money off them. Yeah, yes, okay. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. So Pratik, we spoke about yesterday in our in a preliminary conversation about problem solving. And I think today also we ended up discovering your skill of problem solving. So I, we want you to tell our listeners how they can look at their problems and what are those two, three things they can learn uh, from you about hacking the problems and finding the smartest solution there. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. So problem solving is. Uh, I actually love problem solving. It you know, looks think, like uh, your hobby. Yeah. Part of my stimulation comes from problem solving. <laughs> I don't look for problems. You know, mm-hmm. problems just come, keep coming every day, and you know you have to keep on uh, you know devising solutions to problems. Um, but um, what what I would say is, uh, you know, uh, number one thing that's helped me is to see things as they are. Mm-hmm. You know, don't use a conventional route to solve uh, a new problem. I think uh, the problem with a lot of large corporations is that, you know, they it's very difficult for them to think from first principles. So I think whenever you come across a problem, it's extremely important for you to think about it from a first principles mindset and then figure out, okay, this is the problem. How do I solve it? So that is extremely important. Um, Can think, you elaborate this one more? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll give an example, um, actual example. So I was working for a startup in Silicon Valley about mm. two, three years ago. And, uh, you know, we you know we were the very early stages of, you know, building and we went to clients. So we used to, so we used to sell these, um, uh, these investment uh, plans to a lot of our customers out there. And, uh, and they kept telling us that you guys don't have a track record and how can I invest in you? You have to have at least a 10 year track. I mean, you were a startup, so, you know, you don't right. have a track record, all of that, you know, so we were just like, we were just like, you know, thinking about how do we solve this problem? Do we have to wait for five to 10 years hmm. for us to build that track record and then sell it, which is what most people would do. And then uh, we obviously had a very smart investor in our company, you know, an investor who we spoke to and they're like, you know what? In, in Silicon Valley, you can do, you can buy anything you want. So we actually went in and buy, bought a company that did something very similar. So, so that company was actually shutting shop. So we bought it at almost no price. And then suddenly next day we had this 15 year track record. We went to the same guy and we got money from him. So right. I think that is a definition of problem solving. You know, it's to you know, think, see of things in a very different light and mm-hmm. uh, think of solutions that, you know, may not be very obvious uh, in the first place. So okay. you know, I think one other, uh, so I also work in finance, so it's incredibly regulated, especially right. in the mutual funds industry. And, uh, you know, you have to sort of make sure that uh, compliance is up to compliance. Yes. Yeah. You have to be compliant on like 10,000 things. And so you need a problem solving mindset, mm-hmm. especially if you want to be innovative, you know, so I, so we have this impression that we are a very innovative company and uh, to have that, you have to have a problem mindset, problem solving approach uh, mm-hmm. in my opinion. So I think, um, that's that's pretty important uh, you know and i think the what's 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 also the third thing that i would recommend 
uh, like a lot of users do is uh, to seek help. Yeah. You know, I think uh, most people in my, my, my lifetimes don't have the courage or I don't know if it's the ego thing or what it is, but people don't like seeking help of other people. Oh. Ask um, me about it. Same yeah. thing with mental health. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, even exactly even yeah. mental health. You know, I think uh, the biggest barrier is that you're not look, you know you don't want to talk to people about it. You know, and I think talking ha- solves half the problem. But anyway, so I, I think uh, seeking help is extremely important. You know, I think some of the best entrepreneurs. I'm I'm, lo- I'm looking at like really large entrepreneurs. You know, mm-hmm. who come seeking for help, and you know, I think uh, and 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 I think people generally want to help. You know, so oh, I think, oh, uh, of course, of yeah. Course. So what I've learned is that, so I, you know, LinkedIn blast like 50 people and most of them reply back. And, and so I was looking for a job in, in, in the Bay area. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was extremely tough. It took me a long time, but, uh, you know, I reached out to 200 people and almost maybe 60, 70% got back and I did coffee chats and I learned a lot in the process. So I think seeking help is something which is extremely important. Um, you know, seek help for people outside the industry as well. Uh, for senior people so i think and, and it's it's a good way of building a relationship as well of course, uh, of course. With, with your peers and the people outside so no I and I, I i i keep saying this but this podcast has become our way of actually getting to know people understand them you know how brilliant they are and pick their brains on the the most amazing things that they do in their lives and that is a journey that that has continued yeah but but that whole attitude of saying that, okay, I have a question. And if you have an answer, can I pick your brains? I think is, is something we, we shy away from as, as a culture. I believe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'll give one more example of the seek help, Please. which is very interesting. This is non-finance. So Please. great for a lot of people. So when I, when I moved back to India in 2018, I was very pissed off at the roles in Bombay, hmm. you know, and I was oh. like, well, why are they so like, so uh, bad? And, you know, like, what can we do to the like, silicon make better? Wall. The Silicon Valley. Yeah, point. yeah. So, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I was just like, you know, what can I do about this? You so, know, can I, is there something that could be done? And uh, I had these ideas about, you know, I mean, having putting a little bit of money in, you know, buying radars and trying to, you know, make a map of Bombay and all of that. And all I did is I just, you know, I think went online, you know, look for st- things. I was connected to a professor in IIT Bombay. Okay. And both of us together, you know, built out uh, a, a platform where you, know, you could, so we've actually tied up with around 50 to, 50 to 60 uh, taxis all over Bombay. Okay. And we've inbuilt this app on their phones and uh, with their gyrometer on the phones, we can actually uh, measure the, uh, how bad or good the road is in Bombay. And we wow. publish this uh, open source, you know, on, on our website, which is which, so people, so people can actually see, you know, all of Bombay as to which roads are good, which roads are bad. And you know, the idea was to obviously you know, um, make sure that, you know, people can step up and improve things and all of that. But that's a one way in which, you know, I think, um, you know, if you just think of a problem and um, if you take it seriously and you can really find the people you need to mm-hmm. be able to solve it or at least, you know, make an effort. Oh, and, and also, I think there are people out there who have the solutions to problems yeah. that you don't have solutions to. So all yeah, you exactly. Do is, like, I mean, I, I didn't know anything about this, but in the process, it was good fun. We did this stuff for, you know, some time and it's still live. So, uh, so yeah, so I think, uh, and, and it was fun overall, you know, it was, it was, it was a good experience. That's interesting. So Pratik, if we have to talk about one thing that is your go-to mantra, and I know it's tough for you to pick up, pick one thing. But what would that be like a code that you think about or a, a meditation practice that you always rely on? What is that like that one thing that you always go back to? The way I see it, life is just about, um, you know, playing football, you know, that's basic analogy for life. You know, you play football and you have a lot of fun and, you know, you, you, I think uh, you have team dynamics and uh, you, you are surrounded by people you enjoy and, you know, having a great time. And then you fall, you know, you fall because someone tackles you or you trip over something or, you know, you get tired and all of that. Right. And when you fall, you know, do you tell yourself that, oh, why did I fall? You know, why did this happen to me? And do I victimize myself? Do I tell them, uh, do I tell myself, oh, uh, why me and why nothing else? You know, do right. I feel bad about it? No, I just get up and start playing again. Sure. So I think uh, that's, that's one mantra that has really helped is that, you know, I think uh, life is just a game of football. And if you fall, just get up and start playing again. I think that's a good one to end the conversation <laughs> on because... I think that's what is important for life and also for the, for your investment strategy. If you fall, you fail, you just get up and start again. And I think we should. Remember. Yeah. It's the game that matters, you know, uh, more than anything else. And uh, there's obviously good and you score a goal. Great. If you fall, yeah. it's fine. Sure. I think, yeah. thank you so much, Pratik. I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation and I can think about so many questions that I have. 
about how I'm going to invest further and so many insights on that one. So thank you. This is really, really helpful and enlightening, I must say. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Aditi, on this on this podcast. And um, I obviously hope to you know uh, do more of this in the future. And 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 also this is a great learning experience. So thank you so much. I think uh, you know great great feedback. And you know also uh, it, it's really sort of astonishing how you know how well you sort of read me with my handwriting. Thank you. Thank so, you. So um, so I think uh, you know kudos to uh, your your art, and hopefully you'll be able to make a difference to a lot more people. You know with this. Let's cross on that one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So what kind of investor are you? Uh, is your portfolio diversified enough? Or are you still thinking about what to look at? Or are you being regular, disciplined or not? I think all those questions are important and pertinent for each person because we cannot ignore the financial health when we go about mental health and professional growth. I think that one point people generally miss on, especially when we get very, very busy enjoying our lives. So please make sure that you take whatever necessary decisions here for your financial growth. If you want to know more about Pratik's work, the information is mentioned in the description box. You can go on Instagram. The account is called Glide Invest. Now, as we were talking about money and all the other decisions that people take and how they impact them in the long run, I thought that same concept is also applicable to your mental health. If you don't invest into your mental health on a regular basis, if you do not claim the mental and emotional fitness, then by the time you grow old, you have no compounding skills available there. You absolutely feel outdated and feel stressed. And you know, with time, things become more and more complicated. So let's not do that. If you want to know more about the gym, the India's first mental and emotional gym that we run called APT, the link is aptforme.com. If you want to learn graphology and become part of our community where we keep talking about celebrities and people around you and figuring out the solution by understanding exactly where your shoe hurts then the information is available on my website aditisurana.com i'll see you on friday with one more episode of the absolutely right podcast on a graphology series because we are talking about different trades different handwriting strokes and if you haven't checked it out already do we have finished i think five six episodes of that so do check that out and let me know what are the accurate parts of graphology that you could relate to uh, my email id is right w-r-i-t-e at aditisurana.com I'll see you on Friday. Till then, happy writing.